Welcome back to our webcast series on perspective projection. In this video we're going to look at two-point perspective and the principles underpinning two-point perspective. So how it works and why it works. Uh, now we've since previously looked at the properties of one-point perspective. So you'll remember the example that we had taken of the railway tracks tailing off into the distance back to our vanishing point. So the difference between one-point perspective and two-point perspective is essentially the number of directions that we have to deal with. With our railway tracks, both the left hand rail and the right hand rail, both were parallel lines, both moving into the one distance, or one direction off into the distance. So we had the left hand rail, the right hand rail, because they were all going parallel to each other, they moved to one single vanishing point. With our two point perspective, it's the main difference is that we have more than one direction. So if we look at our object, like so, we can see we have lines moving in this direction, so here we have a level line moving in this direction, there's the top edge which is parallel to it, the back edge here which is parallel to it, they all move parallel to each other off into the distance. So any line moving in this direction will have a single vanishing point. But what makes this different to our one point perspective is that we also have lines moving in a second direction, this direction here. So going across from the front to the back here, along the base here like that and over here along the side as well. So these three lines here they're all parallel to each other so that's they're all moving in a, a second direction. So because they move in a different direction to our lines here they need to have a second vanishing point. So that's what makes our two-point perspective that we have more than one vanishing point. So how we find our vanishing points is quite similar to our one-point perspective. Essentially what we're doing is we're getting our spectator, so our man standing here, to look in the direction that he's trying to find the vanishing point for and where his gaze crosses the picture plane that's our position for our vanishing point. So if we take the example like so, here we have our direction like so, so here we have direction number one and from our spectator we draw a line parallel to that edge. So that edge there so that's our spectator turning his head and if you can imagine our spectator with a little laser pointer attached to his head when he turns around there's the beam of light coming from our laser pointer and there's where it hits the picture plane. So there is the exact same thing in our 3D so there's our laser and there's where the laser hits the picture plane and you can see the spectator is the same height as our horizon line so because we're dealing with level lines here so our line here is level that means our line here is going to be level which means that it has to land on the horizon line. So that's one direction there. Here we have a second direction moving in this direction. So like that our spectator turns his head and we draw a line parallel to it and where it hits the picture plane it's going to locate our vanishing point. So here we can see the same thing. He turns his gaze and there's where our vanishing point is located. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from our plan view here and we're going to project them up into our perspective view and like we said it's going to land on the horizon line so vanishing point one and vanishing point two are on the horizon line like so. So we can see mark them in on our 3D view here as well. So that's our vanishing points located and that's the main difference between our one point perspective and our two point perspective the number of vanishing points that we have to deal with. So if we want to complete this exercise and draw the perspective view of our object we need to look at our object and like before we can see our front edge here is resting against the picture plane and that's quite important because if our front edge here is on the picture plane that means that that line there won't be foreshortened. It won't be smaller or larger than the original so it'll always be the same size as the original. So that edge there is going to be our starting point for drawing in our perspective view. We don't have to worry about scaling it up or scaling it down. So all we need to do is just take that edge, project it straight up into our perspective view. Because it's on the ground you can see it starts on the ground line and you can see the height we have here is going to be the true height that we have are given in our question. So there's our front edge drawn in our perspective view. So in order then to draw our edges going back in our various directions we just decide what direction is it moving and that will tell us what vanishing point it's moving as well. So if you 
take this edge here. Well, because that's moving in that direction, again, from our spectator, we have already determined that vanishing point 1 is moving lines in that direction. So the base point here is going to go back to our vanishing point. The top edge here is moving back in this direction, back to our vanishing point. So there's our height of 0, and there's our top edge, the height moving back, tailing off into the distance. So you can see the same thing in our 3D view. Here we are drawing on the picture plane, so connecting our front edge to our vanishing point there, like so. So to locate the back edge in this question, we simply take our back corner and we join our line down to our spectator, and where it crosses the picture plane, we project it up into our perspective view. So here we can see it in 3D, we join the back edge to our spectator, and where it crosses the picture plane, our point here, is going to give us our location for our edge. So we have our heights determined, and now we're finding our position. And you'll find that in these questions, that's the way most things break down. You'll have to find your height, and you'll have to find your position. So, and your position is generally always found by joining the corner down to your spectator, and where it crosses the picture plane, projecting it up. So it's projected up, and there's the position for our back edge there. So, and there's the height. So that's our height of zero there along the ground, and there's our height for the top edge like that. So there it is in our 3D view as well. So it's just a case of then completing in the rest of the side of the object, and that's the side completed. So there's the side of our object completed on our 3D picture plane. So exactly the same thing applies then for lines moving in this direction here. So again, if we have lines moving in this direction, we look back, we went parallel to it from our spectator, that's a VP2. So here we can see our lines moving off to VP2. So there's our zero line, and there's our top edge line moving back, like so. So like we did before, we did in our 3D, from our front edge back to our VP1, and like we did before, we have our heights found, so we need to find our positions. So join the edge to our spectator, and project it up into our perspective view. So that's our edge found, and our side completed then in our perspective view. We did the same on our 3D, so that's our side completed in our 3D view. So all we need to do then is locate the top edge of our surface, and we don't need to worry too much about position here. All we need to do is take our back corner here, and our side over here, and run them to the appropriate vanishing point. So our corner here will go in this direction, so it goes to VP2. Likewise, our front edge here is going to go in this direction, so in our perspective view, that means moving back to vanishing point 1. So there we are, moving back in that direction. You can see exactly the same thing on our 3D, and then that gives us our perspective view. So there's our 3D view completed, and that's our two-point perspective. As we said, the difference being the number of directions we have for the object. More than one direction means more than one vanishing point. In fact, the number of directions we have is going to determine the number of vanishing points. If we have two directions like we have here, we'll have two vanishing points. If we have three directions, we'll have three vanishing points. Four, five, six, you'll have four, five, or six vanishing points. So that's the main difference between the two of them. So hopefully this has been of some use to you, and um, keep looking at the videos. Thank you.